Ya Rabbil Alameen. And may Allah grant us that sincerity because actually sincerity, this is what matters the most. That to have that much of sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every action, not only in salah, but I mean in all your actions, in your ibadah, in in your adhkar, in your recitation for the Quran, even in your feelings towards the 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 guiltiness, or even if you had shortcomings towards your creator, if you have a sincere repentance to him, then it would be accepted. So may Allah fix all our affairs. May Allah purify our intentions and grant us sincerity in our life, in our ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today, as I promised you, we will have the last and the final lecture about Surah Jathiya. And yesterday we talked about three main things that the people of Quraysh, the disbelievers of Mecca at the time of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, highlighted. And, and what was the first action or the first one that they uh, talked with Rasulullah about? It was about that, you know, we don't care about anything. We only live in this life and nothing is going to happen to us. And not, the only thing that we are aware or afraid of is the time. So the time just is our challenge. Means that they didn't believe in the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they told him, if you are really a prophet of Allah, so what they want, what did they want? Bring our parents back to the light. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded on this particular point that you not only your parents you and your parents and everyone will be back but do not be in rush the test is not over yet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's actually you know the the concept of that we are here for test and let me take you to a broader picture a wider picture but I don't I don't want you to lose your your mind train, okay? You're you're tracking the 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 the, the surah itself. But can I ask you if I said brother Abdul Basit, for example, so where he was before he is born? Where he was before he is born. He he <laughs> he wasn't created yet. Yes, so he, his soul was in something called the Alamul Arwah, the place which Allah brings all the souls together. And when Allah decided that this is the time for his test, Allah made a container for him, which is the body with limited abilities. So he can put that soul in that body for what? To be tested. And then after the test is done, he will be resurrected to be asked about his actions. Then Allah will create for him another container with unlimited abilities to live for eternity. You got it? And that's why now we can understand a Quranic verse in Surah Al-A'raf. And I want you to think it's about reflecting on the meaning of the Quran. Allah said, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Remember, Allah is talking to the Prophet Muhammad. Remember on the day that Allah took all the progeny of Adam and Allah spread them in front of him. Allah took us from the back of our father Adam, all of us, even before we get created. And Allah spread it all the human beings. Then Allah asked them one question. Am I not your Lord? 
They said, yes, you are our master and our creator. Alastu Rabbikum? Didn't uh, you find me? I'm your Lord. They said, yes, you are our Lord. And when that happened, that happened when Allah created Adam. Before we come to this dunya. And one of the people, when we talked about this ayah, he said, Imam, but I do not remember. If you remembered, that wouldn't be a test. Imagine you enter to the exam room and I handed you the questions plus the answers. Would that be a test? <clears throat> no. If Allah made us to remember us, ourselves, our souls in the past, that's actually would not be fair because that means you will realize what's going on. You will realize that, you know what, I remember. So what's the point of having an exam, of having a test in this dunya? And that's why the moment that Allah decides that the exam is over, Allah said in Surah Qaf, فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ We removed the cover lid on your eyes. Means what? Your eyes is limited. So once, that's, that's in the dunya, in your bedroom. In that, that's when you will be in your bedroom, in the hospital, whatever. There is a minute. And by the way, it doesn't need to be sick. It doesn't need to be in a hospital. It doesn't need to, no. No. It doesn't need to be old. You could be young. It doesn't matter. This is the, the, it's a moment that you open your eyes and all of the sudden you see the angels of Allah. You see, can you imagine? Like all of the sudden, you will see the, like many angels are, are doing some stuff. They are taking the soul from your, from your leg and they are working. They are working like they are removing something from your body and they are working. And all of the sudden you, you see, this is the, their leader, the angel of death. And he will be like, Telling you, you know what? I have searched all earth from east and west to find an extra breath for you. And I couldn't find. Then he takes the soul before you take that breath. Extra breath. Subhanallah, it's a moment. And, and why I'm saying it doesn't need to be young. It doesn't need to be old. I remember my brother, Sheikh Abdullah Kamil, rahimahullah. You know him, the great reciter for Quran. He was completely blind. And the man went from a state to another in the United States. He moved the states for many years, reciting Quran, leading taraweeh, and mashallah, his recitation is so great. He moves your heart. And subhanallah, he used to come and visit me every year after Eid and after Ramadan, he used to like a special food to eat. Then I brought the food to him. I called him. I said, hey, we brought the food. We are ready for you. He said, okay, inshallah, I will come when I finish my trip. And subhanallah, he, even, even during that time, he talked to my mom and my, my father, and he used to, hear my daughter's voice and, and subhanallah. But what happened to him? He prayed Fajr. He led the Fajr Salah and recited Quran with the congregation in a Quranic gathering. And he gave lecture. Then after that, he told them, I will go take a little bit of time to sleep and I will be back. The room, his room was in the third floor inside the masjid in New York. And what happened? He entered, he locked the room and he went to sleep and he never woke up. 
That's it. By the time of Dor, they said maybe, you know, he took more sleep, so let him get rest. By the time of Asli, he didn't come. So they sent somebody to knock the door. He didn't respond. They pushed the door. They found him like subhanallah, sleeping like nothing happened. Like they didn't find even his leg is in, 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 a, in a wrong direction or no. He's sleeping, subhanallah, and but he's dead. So what happened? It's the destiny of Allah. So it doesn't need to be an old man. We well, you know we have that kind of stereotyping. Oh, you know what? That's not, I'm, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about some, some people are thinking like this. You know, in my young age, let's play, let's do this, let's take haram. And uh, you know what? I'm still half time. I'm still half time. Even if you ask those young kids or young youth or young men, like 40, 30, 25, are you ready to die? He will tell you, not yet. And by the way, this question, no matter what the age of the person, you ask him, are you ready to die? Most of people will say not yet. 80 years old, 90 years old, even 100 years old. Are you ready to die? Not yet. So if 90 years old is not yet, so when are you going to be ready? And that's why, subhanAllah, by that time, you, you do not expect the stereotyping in the minds of those who are in 30s or 40s that, you know what, I will do whatever I want till when I get closer to 80 something, then I will be sick a little bit, then they will take me to the hospital. At that time, I will make tawbah to Allah. Allah would accept me. Then when I die, Allah will tell me, enter Jannah. You know that's that scenario, that stereotyping, that everyone mostly they they have that kind of mindset. But who told you? It's a, a minute. So Allah said to the disbelievers of Mecca, "You are going to die, and you are going to not worry. You are going to see your parents." But Allah said, and Allah described that scene. That's why this surah is called Surah Al Jathiya. Allah said, "Watara." You will see your parents, you will see the dead will be resurrected, you will see the day of judgment, you will see this, you will see this. And then Allah said, Among, amongst the things that you will see on that day, that you will see every nation, all nations are sitting on their knees. That's why this surah is named the kneeling, all the nations, and you might ask Imam, what makes them, what make them to sit on their knees? Because you do not know what before that. Let me tell you the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So are you ready to listen to the hadith? I think brother Ashmi want to take rest. So inshallah, let's go. No problem. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me know if you want to sleep so we can turn off the light and no, keep quiet. Stop. Okay, inshallah. You have a blanket, Hajjazli? Yeah. Just in case. Okay, if he fell asleep. Okay, so now you don't know the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before the, those nations. What makes the nations to sit on their knees? Listen to this. He said, while people are waiting in the area which is called Al-Mahshar, the, the place that they would be gathered together, Allah will give the order to the angels to bring the hellfire. The hellfire has 70,000 zimam, like rope, 70 thick ropes, 70,000 thick ropes. Each rope got pulled by 70,000 angels. Just think about it. 70,000 ropes, each rope will be pulled by 70,000 angels. And they will drag the hellfire 
in the middle. That's when all nations will see the hell fire, they will sit underneath. This is the moment. وَتَرَى كُلَّ أُمَّةٍ جَاثِيَةٍ كُلُّ أُمَّةٍ تُدْعَى إِلَى كِتَابِهِ Every nation will take its book. Means everyone will receive his book. And while they are sitting on their knees, Allah will give the order to the books, to the records to fly over their heads. And your book will be above your head. You know, they will fly, 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 fly like the F-16, you know the F-16? So it will fly, 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 fly till it comes, your book will come to over your head. And people will be different. Some people will pick up by right hand. Some people will pick up with left hand. What's the worst? Oh, behind your back. This is the worst. Someone will pick his book behind his back. That would be so difficult. And it's a sign that he didn't do well. They will read. And at that time, the hisab will start. But I wanted to get you one of the great scenes that no one is talking about. Actually, no one is mentioning that point. Allah will ask the people, nations after nations, who will be the first nation to be asked? The nation of Muhammad. Yet, the nation of Muhammad is the last one to come. It will be the first one to be asked. Imam, what's the purpose? Because we have a certain mission to do. After this, we will work as witnesses. Witnesses. Yes, that's our mission. What's our mission as Ummah of Rasulullah? After we finish, that's why we will start early because we have another mission to do. And the Rasulullah said in the authentic hadith that the people of Nuh alayhi salam, you know, 950 years, and he will be asked, Nuh first will be asked, Allah will say, oh Nuh, did you convey the message? Did you tell people about me? He would say, yes, oh Allah, I did it. I conveyed the message. Then Allah will ask, his nation, his people. Did Noah told you about me? They would say, no. No, he didn't. Oh Allah, he didn't tell us about you. Then Allah will tell Noah, if you want to be saved today, find a somebody to witness for you. So he will say, I cannot find a witness better than Muhammad and his Ummah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Rasulullah will be called. Do you witness that Noah had, had con conveyed the message? He would say, yes, oh Allah, you told us about this in the Quran and we witness. And Subhanallah, Allah said in the Quran, and this ayah, that verse made Rasulullah to cry. Even the person who was reciting that verse, Rasulullah told him, stop reciting. Stop. I cannot continue with this. And when he stopped, the man said, I looked at Rasulullah and found him crying. What's the verse? فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا O oh, Muhammad, what do you think about the day that we can bring a witness or, some, or something from each ummah to be just a witness? And you alone, O oh Muhammad, will be a witness for all the creation of Allah. What an honor. What an honor to the Prophet Muhammad So now you can picture this in your mind. Oh yes, after we come out, from our graves, we will be resurrected. Then we will move to a certain big land that we don't know where it will be. Then afterwards, the angels will drag the hellfire. We will sit on their knees. We will get our books. We will read our books. Our nation will be the first to be called for hisab. Once we finish, we will witness till we are 
we witness all the people to, till they got finished and then inshallah will be taken by the leadership of Rasulullah to Jannah. Oh yeah. That's a, that's a very big question. The non-believers. I explained before that we differentiate between the person who didn't receive the message at all, who didn't know anything about the message, or he got the message messed up. He got the wrong one. Allah said clearly in the Quran, Surah Al-Isra, وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا We would never punish anyone that he didn't get the real message. Allah wouldn't punish any person that he didn't get the real message. But the problem is for the person who got the message was explained well to him. And yet he disbelieved in Allah. This is the one that we would say his issue is belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the controller and he is the absolute just. Yes. Okay, that's one of the narrations that it will be the message will be presented again on that day. This is one of the narrations that the message will be presented somehow on the day of judgment to him to see what he is going to say, what he is going to respond with. And that based on his response, the decision will be taken. But again, Allah said clearly, I wouldn't punish him if, like imagine, I personally, and, and, and let me be honest and clear here. Actually, I was shocked and surprised. Like all my life, I thought that everyone know about Islam, that everyone knows the reality of the message. It's the message of peace and mercy as we were raised up. But I was shocked when I traveled to the United States that actually lots of people really don't know anything about Islam. And who can be blamed? You might say, oh, the media, the all this and this and this. But actually, I blame ourselves. It's our fault. Yes. Astaghfirullah, <laughs> Astaghfirullah. <laughs> That's that, that. The final decision will be for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It's no not problem. for me. And by the way, by the way, we as Muslims, we have that firm belief that no one owns the keys of Jannah and the Hellfire. No one. And this is the middle course. Lots of people who are so extreme in that religion, in their religion. Sometimes they might call people kafir. They might name and they will say, oh, that person will be in the hellfire. No, that's not Islam. That's not our belief. We do not own the keys of Jannah and the keys of the hellfire to judge and give final decision that somebody will be there or somebody will be in the hellfire. Like, like imagine, imagine, if a person that we know in our masjid had passed away, can the imam say, you know what? Our brother right now, I swear that he is in Jannah. Can you say that? No one can say that, no one. So may Allah guide us to the right path, Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan for listening. <clears throat> Surah al jathiyah has actually lots and lots of information and lots of lessons that we can learn from. It's about the, the, the nations, it's about 
The day of judgment, it's about the signs of the creation of Allah. Inshallah, next week, we will continue with another surah, which is Surah Al-Ahqaf. What is Al-Ahqaf means? What is Al-Ahqaf means? Yes, somebody. Huh? Mm, huh? The, the desert? Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe. And what about hills? Dunes and hills are basically the same thing. The same thing, right? Okay, so let's talk about this. I wouldn't give answer now because if I give answer, you wouldn't attend the next no, week. Let's... Yeah, so inshallah, next week we will continue about Surah Al or we will start talking about Surah Al Ahqaf. May Allah accept from all of us. Allahumma ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Zakum Allah khairan. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.